Hey everyone, it's Rose and that's Cher. And today I'm going to be making a video talking about sleep apnea, what causes it, what can happen if it's left untreated. So let's go ahead and we'll jump right into it. All right, so before I get started, I want to give some credit where credit's due. Danny Suze and Michael Lee Petty have both kind of talked about how Amberlynn kind of seems to be declining mentally, like having trouble finding words, and just doesn't seem to be as sharp as she nor as she used to be anyway. Um, and then the other night I was talking to Pix about this, and she was talking about the sleep apnea, and if she wonders if that has is having any effect on her mentally, and I was like, oh, absolutely, 100% it is. So I thought that I should do some research on it to back back up my thoughts on it and then let you guys in on some information regarding sleep apnea. So um, again, not a doctor, not trying to diagnose Amberlynn with sleep apnea, but she has come on camera and said that she has it and then a doctor told her that she had it. Although you do need to have a sleep study to be diagnosed with sleep apnea. So that's all in the information. So. Let me just jump right into it. So sleep apnea is a sleep disorder in which breathing repeatedly stops and starts while you're asleep. So you have moments while you're sleeping where you stop breathing. Um, there are two types of sleep apnea. There's obstructive sleep apnea, which is the most common type. And that's when the soft tissue at the back of your throat actually collapses while you're asleep. And then the other kind of sleep apnea is central sleep apnea. And that's when your brain stops sending signals to your body to breathe. Um, that's a lot of times caused by neurological problems. Um, but the kind that Amber Lynn Reed would have would be the obstructive sleep apnea. And that would be from just her weight um, while she's laying flat on her back, just pushing down on her throat and her lungs and her diaphragm while, while she's laying down. Sleep apnea can infect anybody at any age. So even children can have sleep apnea. Some risk factors for developing sleep apnea are being a man, being overweight, being over the age of 40, having a large neck size, which would be greater than 17 inches for men and greater than 16 inches for um, women. So that's, they're measuring like around like the circumference of your neck. And then um, having large tonsils, a large tongue or a small jawbone, which I don't have problems with that. <laughs> uh, my square jaw, anyway. Having a family history of sleep apnea and nasal obstruction due to a deviated septum, um, allergies, or a sinus problem. Sleep apnea, if it's left untreated, can cause high blood pressure, which Amberlynn has come out and said she has, stroke, heart failure, irregular heartbeats, and heart attacks. She's already talked about having heart palpitations, so there's that one. Diabetes mellitus, which diabetes, um, depression worsening ADHD and headaches. And the other thing um, that I found is that it can also be responsible for poor performance in everyday activities like work and school. Um, it can cause people to have car wrecks and academic underachievement in children and adolescents. So basically, if you're leaving your sleep apnea untreated, so you're, you constantly stop breathing while you're sleeping, you're affecting the oxygen supply that's getting to your brain. But on top of that, you're affecting how much like good sleep you're getting at night. So it's going to affect you every day from being fatigued, tired, you know, not underperforming all over the place, as well as affecting your brain because you're not the, you know, the oxygen isn't flowing through your whole body when you're not breathing. Some symptoms of sleep apnea include waking up with a very sore or dry throat, loud snoring, occasionally waking up with a choking or gasping sensation, sleep, sleepiness or lack of energy during the day, which Amberlynn has come out and said she has, morning headaches, restless sleep, forgetfulness, mood changes, and decreased sex drive. So as far as the forgetfulness is concerned, this is something that people have started noticing in her videos. Like she replaces words with situation or whatever type deal. Like, so she has word finding difficulty. She's trying to say something. She can't think of the word that she's trying to say. So she throws in a filler word until her brain catches up and is able to come up with that word. Or at least that's the, that's allegedly the theory that, that we're all coming to, allegedly. <laughs> um, 
and recurrent awakenings or insomnia. This is also something that she's complained about as far as not being able to sleep at night, having insomnia. I think she's come out in videos before and said things about insomnia. So to be diagnosed with sleep apnea, you must go through a sleep study, which looks at many different things such as brain activity, snoring activity, nasal airflow, and eye movements while you're asleep. And it electronically transmits and records them while you're sleeping. Um, so in my research, I found that you can actually go to like a sleep center and have this done, or you can do it at home. I know there's like portable machines that they'll give you that you can hook um, up to while you're sleeping at home and they can test you while you're sleeping at home. Um, but anyway, so all that data is sent to a sleep specialist and they are then the ones that would determine if you have sleep apnea or not. And how do you treat sleep apnea? Um, some easy ones that you can do at home before having to get into like the more serious ones would be lose weight, don't drink alcohol or use sleeping pills, change your sleep position to improve your your breathing. So that's like how Amberlynn has come out and said she sleeps sitting up. That's what a lot of people with sleep apnea end up having to do. So because when you lay flat, the weight of your stomach and everything else compresses your throat, you know, your lungs, all of that. Um, it's just easier to sit up so you don't have that weight pressing down against you. And another thing would be stop smoking. Now, um, doctors can prescribe you a CPAP machine and CPAP stands for continuous positive airway pressure. So what this is, is it's like a mask that you can wear. It's, there are some that just go in your nose and there are some that will go over your mouth and your nose. It's delivering a constant airflow into your nose and your mouth to keep that airway from being compressed while you're sleeping. Um, and it's the, the most common treatment used for sleep apnea. A BiPAP machine can also be used. Um, BiPAP stands for bi-level positive airway pressure and it's similar to a CPAP, but um, the difference is that the airflow changes with your breathing in and breathing out. Some other things that aren't as commonly used are dental devices. Like I know there are like different mouth guards and things that people can use um, that can help keep you from snoring or keep or help treat your sleep apnea, you'd have to go to a dentist that specializes in the treatment of sleep apnea in order to get something like that. And then there's also different surgeries. Like if you're having um, nasal surgery, um, if you're having like, if you have a deviated septum, you can get that fixed to hopefully help relieve the sleep apnea. And then um, I did a little bit more research because I wanted to know specifically um, obesity's effect on somebody with sleep apnea or um, its effect in causing sleep apnea. And I found that um, in adults, excess weight is the strongest risk factor associated with obstructive sleep apnea. Um, each unit increase in BMI is associated with a 14% increase of developing obstructive sleep apnea. And a 10% weight gain increases the odds of developing moderate or severe um, obstructive sleep apnea by six times. So if you're somebody who already has sleep apnea and then you gain weight, your chances of increasing the severity of your sleep apnea increase by six times. Kind of the bottom line is if you have sleep apnea or... Um, or if you're afraid of developing sleep apnea, losing weight is what's gonna keep you from doing that. It's kind of the biggest thing that I found in one of the most modifiable risk factors uh, that a person has. And what I mean by a modifiable risk factor is a risk factor that you have control over and can change. Um, so that would be things like um, being overweight if you're, if you're a smoker, then um, there's non-modifiable risk factors, which are things like it's more common in males, you can't change what sex you are um, biologically, your age, the risk factor being over the age of 40, we can't change that. And as far as like the makeup of your tonsils or your tongue, we have no control over that either. I think that it is probable that um, Amberlynn's non-treated sleep apnea could be affecting her um, mentation or her mental status, um, have ma making it more difficult for her to find words or you know, not immediately knowing what something is called. She's she's kind of shown, especially recent or recently, that she is having trouble coming up with words like she'll ask Becky like oh what's it called like example the hardwood floors when she was like what's it called hardwood floors that's just an example of her not you know being as sharp as 
um, one would think she would be at the age of 28. As far as her whole vlogmas and me reacting to some of the videos, I really want to wait until she puts out a video on exercise or something along that line that I can react to um, as far as physical therapy is concerned. I don't want to get on and, you know, nitpick when she seems to be saying and doing the right things. We're obviously back in phase one. Hopefully this continues. Um, but I am cautiously optimistic right now. Um, there have been many times that I'm, I think that she's, you know, on the right path again and then she jumps off. This video, the last video I watched, she talked about hot Cheetos for like a solid three minutes. So that makes me a little nervous. But again, I am cautiously optimistic that um, she's doing well and losing weight and succeeding. So hopefully she continues and, you know, kind of proves me wrong. I want to thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in hearing more from me, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload and when I go live. Um, I always leave my Twitter and Instagram linked down below so you can follow me over there if you want to see more from me. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one.